scholarship. Are those like the, we have EBT coins? Oh, the, the coupons? The coupons. Um, we have not done the coupons in the past, but I would love to do them this year. I just have to do the paperwork to get it in. But that, you remind me that would be a good thing to do. Where can you have a backyard chicken farm around here? Um, I, it, it would be unethical for me to um, suggest that you break the law. <laughs> But I, I remember there used to be a guy over here that had them, but I don't think he lived in the city. I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I know that I know that a number of the communities are changing their poultry zoning laws. I have a customer who uh, actually ran for the zoning board in our community so that he could actually have that changed. And I know people who are actively working to change those laws. And if you are interested in connecting with other people who are interested in that, give me your name and contact information. I, I can't. I, I'm just curious. Yeah, no, I know there are people. I know there are a lot. Of, I've had a lot of conversations with people from Duncan and other people that, that are interested in changing those laws so they can affect their chance. Yes. She has a question. If you crack an egg and the yolk spreads, is it still okay? Okay, good question. Excellent question. She wants to know if you crack open an egg and the yolk breaks and spreads out in the bowl, is it okay to use? I would say use your nose as a good guide and your eyes. If what comes out of that shell is black, don't use it. If it looks okay, it's probably all right. If there's a there are a number of factors that affect integrity of the yolk. They might have had blood in it sometimes. So blood, blood spots are simply, um, that's okay. That is all right, actually. Um, I know it looks unsightly. There are two things that occur in eggs, blood, and it's just, um, it's just, it just happens sometimes. It's like a freak accident on the on the bird, and there's nothing wrong. With it. The other thing are are what they call meat spots, which is actually just a little bit of fibrous material. Yeah, there's a tiny. Is that or is that a shell? It might be a little. What they call meat spots. It's it's just a little bit of of um, tissue that gets. You can scoop it out, or you can just scramble it up with your eggs. It's not harmful in any way. Thank you. Sometimes the egg, the yolk, will break if it's not fresh. Um, but it doesn't mean that the egg's not still still good to use. There's also, if, if the hen has not been well fed, meaning if she has a poor nutritional diet, that will affect the, the integrity of the yolk and the yolk will not stay firm together. So I'd say as long as the egg's not six months old um, and it doesn't look bad or smell bad, you're probably okay. What about eggs that float? Eggs that float. There is a, um, uh, there is a belief that eggs floating in water are not any good. I'll tell you, I've taken those eggs that were floating in water and I've cracked them open and they were just fine. So, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, they have little eggs a couple of Oh, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. That, what that means, remember I talked about how the shell is porous and the moisture from inside the egg begins to evaporate out the interior part of the egg begins to pull away from the shell. You actually get an air spot. And that's probably what's causing the egg to float, is that air spot in the egg. Blood spots in that, it's just, it, it's, it's sort of a, it's not harmful in any way. You can just take it out. Yeah. I'd say if you open every once in a while, maybe like one in every couple of thousand that we crack open. We might find a crack open an egg that's got a lot of blood on the inside and those we just pitch. If you buy a dozen of eggs from us and you get one of those, let me know and I'll replace the edge. <laughs>
how long can you keep hard boiled eggs um, on shell in the fridge? Um, I've kept them a long time, but I'd say you're okay at least a week. <laughs> I've probably kept them two weeks <laughs> at least. I, you know, um, you should probably try to try to eat them promptly. I, I haven't had a problem with them going back, so I don't know what to say to answer the question. Are these organic or are they? Well, see, it might make a difference. It might make a difference on the egg itself. On the origin of the egg. Other questions? Am I missing people back here? What happens to the male chickens? What happens to the male chickens? Excellent question. <laughs> They taste good. <laughs> They're called roosters. No, I know, but I don't judge them. Well, intentionally, yes. No, they're not. No, they're not called roosters. Uh, a male chicken is called a cockerel until it is a year old. After a year, it's called a rooster. At our firm, as I mentioned, we, we raise all of our own replacement layers. Half of those that hatch are generally cockerels. We raise them up to about 16 weeks on pasture, and then we butcher them as heritage chickens. So, yeah. And and this is these are the chickens that your grandparents used to have running around in their yard that they would have for Sunday dinner. You know, they have great flavor. They're not they're not the big huge you know, breasted monstrosities you buy in the grocery store, but they have a wonderful flavor to them. They make great soup stock. I, I tell people these are great. They don't have a lot of fat on them. So it's not just the best of a roasting chicken, but for a crock pot chicken, they're fabulous. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So. The question was asked, do you need a rooster to get eggs? Do you need a rooster to get eggs? How many of you no. would guess yes? No. You would say yes. Well then, you were right with me when I first started raising chickens. My very first batch of chickens, I ordered chicks that I ordered up. I call this hatchery and I go, I want to, I want to order a dozen Rhode Island Reds and a dozen meat chickens. Okay. I said, I, I need. Um, so how do they come? He says, Well, you want pullets or you want straight run or what do you want? And I said, Well. I guess I need a couple of roosters to have eggs, don't I? Long pause. <laughs> sure, that'll be two cockerels and ten puns. <laughs> no, you don't need you don't need I know, I know. He knew he, he knew he had a sucker in his head. You don't need a rooster to have to get eggs. You need it if you want babies, baby chicks. Yes. We run about eight. We run eight coops on our pastures. Every coop has approximately thirty to forty hens in it, and uh, generally, I have at least one to two roosters in each coop. They're very, very important uh, partners in our farm. I, I select the roosters very carefully. They have to be good workers. They have to be industrious. And right now I've got one who's lazy. He likes to lay under the tree and sleep all day. He's not going to be around very long. Uh, you know, yeah. The rooster needs to do two things. He has to keep one eye on the sky and one eye on the girls. All the time. Why? Because Predators come from the sky, predators come from the land. His primary job is to protect the girls, and if he can't do that, he's not staying on my farm. <laughs> All right, I, I have, I, you know what, they live a good life. They get fed as much as they want and the best feed available, and, but I do expect them to work. Are there animals you can park in the chickens that protect the chickens? I'm doing a trial this year with geese. Uh, you may have heard of geese being used as guardians, guardian geese. And I'm hoping that the geese will help to protect the chickens a bit. 